Moving on to our next submitter, um, we have Nairi Bacon. Nairi? Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the table. In many countries, water is classed as the new gold. And in Wall Street, water has now joined oil and gold as a traded commodity. In spite of this, Council has said it has no power to make water bottling companies pay a levy for the millions of litres of water they take from Christchurch aquifers and export. Laws can and do get changed. Why has the Council not made this matter an urgent priority, ensuring companies such as these are also contributing to Christchurch's infrastructure? The question must also be asked, are Christchurch ratepayers now being asked to pay for water to compensate for the water now being taken by these companies. The draft long-term plan has document makes mention of how COVID-19 has affected city council finances, but completely disregards the financial impact COVID has had on its ratepayers, including, in many cases, job losses, hours reduced, or pay reductions. In spite of the COVID lockdown, chief executives of city council-owned companies were granted obscene amounts of money in performance bonuses, and council approved a $39 million project to construct a new building for the Court Theatre. The manor in which 750 hectares of land in Taurus was purchased by the council at a cost of 45 million, at best, can only be described as devious. Again, this money should have been spent on Christchurch infrastructure. In conclusion, the suggestion of rates being pushed up to 47.8% by 2031 is absolutely outrageous. This is not a council who needs to put up rates to anywhere near this level. This is a council who needs budgeting advice. All right, thank you very much indeed for the submission. That neatly brings us to the, to the end of the time, um, but some points very well made, and thank you very much for coming along and doing that. Thank you. Thank you. So our next submitter, Stuart McKee.